If lifestyle is the culprit, it's also the cure. The food we eat is causing or can cure these metabolic issues. Control carbohydrates. And by that I mean, my suggestion is, if the fiber to everything else in there is, is high, then that will be a carbohydrate that's generally going to be good. My suggestion, focus on whole fruits and vegetables as primary sources of carbohydrates. Whatever the carbohydrate desire is to eat, prioritize protein. This must be, if you're prioritizing the best protein for the human body, you want it. we humans, we need it in our monogastric system. We need it to come from animal sources. Every, by every metric, an animal source will have superior absorption and uh, without the complications of a plant source protein. We are built to eat other animal and, and animal source proteins. Prioritize the protein. Um, whatever, it's a modest insulin effect. Now, in nature, protein never comes alone. In our hubris and in our fear of fat, we've pulled it apart. But protein always comes with fat in nature. There is, there is truly no exception to this. If it's a, nat a natural protein, fat comes with it. That's how we should eat it. Uh, not only do we absorb the protein better, but because we digest it better. Most people don't appreciate that. That we think we have, we have proteolytic enzymes in the intestines coming from the pancreas that will split up the proteins into small enough units so that we can pull it across our intestines. But those proteolytic enzymes don't work as well without bile. Bile enhances the ability of the intestines to digest protein. And we only have bile getting released into the intestines when we eat fat. They should always come together. Do not fear the fat that comes with the protein. And I would even say be liberal with adding some fat to your protein. That as much as my talk has seemed a bit like a horror story, um, there, it's a happy ending, which is that if we look an insulin-centric lens, rather, we appreciate that we just need to lower the insulin. And we do that by managing our macronutrients. But that would be a really helpful way to lower insulin and literally cure the problem. Removing the medic, keeping the medications tucked up in the medicine cabinet until they expire. All right, so how can we measure it next? There are different ways to measure this. And I've lumped them into two categories. The dynamic measurement is a two-hour oral glucose tolerance test with insulin being measured at the time points. I'm not going to talk about it um, because it's so uncommon to get it done. The first one simply being measuring insulin. Fasting insulin is lower than around mid-30s picomoles. That's a very, very good sign. Um, but that would be a good sign that insulin levels are in a healthy, low range, and the body is responding well to it. In other words, the body's insulin sensitive. Um, but at the same time, there is another molecule called C-peptide that comes in the nan nanogram per mil range. C-peptide is not insulin, but they are sister molecules. That when they're born, they're born as twins. They come out of the beta cell into the blood one to one. Now, hearing me say that, every time the beta cell releases an insulin, it releases a C-peptide. That is true. <clears throat> you may be tempted to think, well, then let's just measure C-peptide. But you can't. It has a very, very different half-life. C-peptide sticks around in the blood much, much longer. If you have a type 2 diabetic patient who is on insulin therapy, then measuring insulin won't work. Because you're just as much measuring what's coming from the syringe as you are what's coming from their beta cells. But C-peptide is only made from the beta cells. If a clinician is wanting, or the patient is wanting, to get off their insulin therapy, you need to know, are the beta cells actually making insulin? C-peptide will be the confirmation. That's the proof positive. This is a person who can graduate out of their insulin treatments onto just a dietary regime.